The Athletic just released an article outlining the top concerns for each NHL team heading into this draft season, and surprise, surprise, they all wanted to talk about Matvey Michkov when it came to the Montreal Canadiens. We'll be talking about exactly what they said, plus Habs prospect Logan Mayu has been showing some incredible leadership with the London Knights. And finally, we have an unfortunate but kind of funny update with the Florida first round pick, so you don't want to miss this edition of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome everyone to today's news edition of Habs Digest. I'm your host, Josh Goss, alongside my co-host, Jesse Poirier. And as always, a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button. Over 70% of you guys who are watching are not subscribed, and we know we've been having a lot of new viewers recently. So if you love 10-minute Habs news videos, this is the spot to be. We really appreciate everyone's support. And if you're a new viewer, like we said, hit subscribe. There's a lot more where this content comes from. Jesse, let's open this video up today with some of the biggest concerns for the Habs draft. Like I said, the Athletic, and namely Arpen Basu, the Athletic representative for the Montreal Canadiens, were talking about the biggest concerns, well, for each NHL team. But when it came to Montreal, let's see what they had to say about Matvey Michkov. Arpen Basu said that assuming Michkov is there at number 5, we all know about his potential, but what are some of the reasons why the Canadiens could be tempted to pass on him aside from his, aside from his KHL contract and his passport? So... Full disclaimer, we're not talking about his contract, passport, Russia, any of that. We're just talking about specifically Michkov's play. So he asked Promman and Wheeler, two of the best you know, prospect scout guys with the Athletic, as, again, this is probably the biggest concern for Montreal heading into the draft. Promman says he's listed at 5'10", some scouts feel he's closer to 5'9", he's elusive with average foot speed, one-way winger, and he says there aren't many impact NHL players in his lifetime who look and play like him, and there's kind of no one in the NHL who looks like him, but there are 25 Reinbachers. And Wheeler goes on to say, in order, his playing competitiveness off the puck are a concern, his size and position combo might be, his skating, though he thinks his skating is stronger than he gets credit for, and finally, his tendencies and habits that he'd like to see him slowly work away from. Jesse, to me, when we look at a lot of these concerns about Matvey Michkov, again, a lot of them, especially on Wheeler's front, scream just young player that needs to develop a bit of maturity. What are you seeing when you hear these specific concerns about Michkov and to an even more specific note, his actual play on the ice. That they don't like for us to have nice things. <laughs> the Montreal <laughs> Canadiens would be very lucky to draft Matt Bay Mitchcock with the fifth overall pick because it's interesting how they're mentioning in the article that, okay, 5'10", maybe more 5'9". He's listed at 5'10", and you know which other prospect is listed at 5'10 in this draft? Connor Bedard. Yep. <laughs> I yep. really feel like we're Good really point. grasping at straws with a lot of and saying the comparison that we've not another player in the NHL that kind of fits that profile. I feel like there's many, there's been many examples of, of smaller players that have just lit up the net, even in recent years, you know, which we could go off and name quite a bit, but we'll save. I think a lot of our view is already that's already pretty self-evident. So for myself, it's um I feel like we're really nitpicking his game where if Matthew and Mitchkov was Canadian or a North American skater, he'd be going at least second for sure, and if not first overall. So I, I'm not getting quite the Matthew Mitchkov slander here. No, I, and to be fair, you know, I guess they did ask what are the biggest concerns, and and again, at the end of the day, we, Promen and Wheeler both did say, hey, we think Matthew Mitchkov is going to be a star, but if we had to pick, this is it. Um, I am a little, you made a great point about that height, and you know who someone that listed as 5'9", who looks more like 5'10"? Lane Hudson. There's a lot of like, look, when you're a hockey player and you're wearing skates all the time, this the difference between 5'9 and 5'10", is just like, it doesn't exist unless you're 5'6", saying you're 5'9", and 6'1", saying you're 5'10", right? At at the end of the day, that little inch of difference is really not going to make that much of an impact, so I completely agree, and when we get to his actual specific concerns, like we said, I'll bring up Wheeler's stuff again, I mean, if these are the, like, this is the actual order of reasons for skepticism on Matvey Michkov, I understand the concerns for these, size, position, combo, maybe the most legit of these, but like, 1, 3, and 4, even though his skating is stronger than, than he thinks, he's like, these are things that he can very much improve, and some of them just straight up come with maturity. Like, you gotta think, Jesse, that as soon as he eventually comes over to North America, or even gains a few years playing in this Russian men's league, surrounded by some veterans, a lot of this stuff will just fix itself. It will, and a lot of these things were the same things that were said about Alex Ovechkin. And I mean, look how his career turned out. I actually think it's great that they're saying the same things, even in the negative things about Matvey Mishkov that they're saying about Alex Ovechkin. And Alex, he turned out to be one of the most complete players in the NHL. He really developed his game. Obviously, he was more 
offensive focus, you know, first coming into the league, but he really developed himself to be a heavy body checker, to play that defensive play, to really make the, the team plays that you need to win. And I feel like Matt Mitchkov is following exactly in the steps of Alex Ovechkin. Very, very interesting. We'll have to wait and see. Matt Mitchkov is such an interesting prospect. But we'll have to move on from him for now as we're going to talk a bit about a current Habs prospect, one that has already been drafted by Montreal, and that is Logan Mayu. And he's been showing some amazing leadership. Uh, his OHL London Knights unfortunately got eliminated at the hands of the Peterborough Peets and Owen Beck, who, by the way, Owen Beck somehow got the second game of his suspension just removed, so he's going to play in game one. I don't know how that works. But anyway, speaking of Logan Mayu, uh, Dale Hunter has said, quote, I saw tremendous growth in him from every perspective this year. You can see he's a leader on the ice. The guys in the team look up to him. He took under Dale Hunter and his staff there. And uh, from Dale Hunter, he said, we had a lot of young guys on our team this year. He was positive and encouraging with them. He was a leader, helped them figure it out. And those guys did really well this year. Jesse, you know, the character growth of Logan Mayu is something a lot of Habs fans and I guess hockey fans in general have been anticipating after, you know, the, the allegations and well, not even just allegations, what he did, the, the terrible thing he did a few years ago, but he has really been showing that he's grown as a person and he's now seen as a leader for these young guys coming up through the system. I mean, to me, this is just the, the perfect thing to see about Logan Mayu. What do you think about, uh, about these quotes from Dale Hunter? It's so true. Not only do we want to hear this news, but it's kind of what we need to hear. Just because we know we talk about it so much on the show, a big part of the Montreal Canadiens, their growth and development is just that positive team culture. Um, you know, and it seems like Logan Mayu has really been putting in the work. Actually, in a quote from, from his agent, he said, truly putting in the work to really just better himself on and off the ice. He's been noted from Dale Hunter, who's very much a straight shooter, saying that, um, he's had a positive effect on his teammates, being very encouraging them, and even bringing out the best since a lot of younger guys on the team and them, you know, really producing at uh, at some great rates uh, due to some leadership from Logan Mayu. So not only amazing to see that he's developing, but that he's having a great effect on him. And obviously, this is great news for himself personally, uh, but obviously great news for, for the Montreal Canadiens as well. Yeah, it's really seeming more and more like day by day he's going to fit well, uh, fit in well with the team culture. And they go on to say in that article that they expect him to play a year, maybe two in the AHL to, again, fully develop himself. And some Habs fans are saying maybe he'll take over for David Savard once that contract runs up in a couple of years. Wouldn't be surprising. So Logan Mayu, definitely on the right track. It's just everything we're hearing about him recently has certainly been positive. Final thing for the video today. I mean, look, we all know Florida's in the Stanley Cup Finals. Matthew Kachuk is one of the most clutch players in the NHL. It's kind of ridiculous, but, you know, it's unfortunate news for the Habs because the Habs have their pick. I remember times earlier this year, Jesse, where we're like, hey, we've sim in the draft lottery until the Habs get one and two. This Florida pick was a top 10 pick, and then they just went, made the playoffs. Habs lost to them a few times. If the Penguins had just beat Chicago, that pick would be number 17. But no, now at best, it'll be number 31. Um, it's kind of a shame, Jesse, that it's 31, but I kind of take solace in the fact that they went and they... Forced the Bruins to blow a 3-1 lead, huge Habs rival. They just blew the doors off against the Leafs, huge Habs rival. And uh, the Habs offer sheet rival, the Carolina Hurricanes, Sebastian Ajo, Yasperi, Kakanyemi. How many games did that take, Yasperi? That's it, right? The Florida Panthers went in. Habs have a worse pick, Jesse, but I'm pretty optimistic because these late round, late first round draft picks have treated Montreal pretty well recently. No, definitely not too concerned. Definitely this pick is getting a lot worse pretty quickly. I saw some interesting uh, tweets online pointing out that the Calgary Flames had 93 points in this regular season, which they missed the playoffs with. They subsequently fired their coach mm -hmm. and their GM. And then wow. the Florida Panthers, who they're obviously linked to with, with that Kachuk trade, Huberto trade, they get 92 points <laughs> and then they end up making their way to the Stanley Cup final. So, I mean, it's it's really a razor's edge sometime, right? It kind of makes you think for those teams that are on the fridge just trying to make the playoffs. Um, you know, once you get in there, really anything can kind of happen, right? And you got to feel like there's a lot more parity in the league right now. So, if you get in there, what Florida Panthers are really showing this year is you got a chance to win it all if you do. Yeah, you do. And I mean, well, it also helps when your goalie gets hot at the right time. And we're quite familiar with that over here at Habs Digest. I mean, it showed what was this, Bobrovsky, and I forget the other couple goalies, but Carey Price as well for top goalie playoff save percentages since 2018. Carey Price is still in the top four. It was something like a 968 or no, maybe not that high, but it was extremely high. Um, but yeah, Bob is lighting it up at the right time. Matthew Kachuk. 
lighting the lamps, scoring clutch goals. That team's going crazy, but hey, Jesse, the Habs picked Logan Mayu at number 31. They picked Owen Beck at, I think, 33. Lane Hudson was a second-round pick. Are you optimistic, even if this pick ends up being 31 or maybe 32 if Florida ends up finishing the job? Are you optimistic that Kent Hughes and Jeff Gorton will find maybe another diamond in the rough? In this year's draft and the fact that we got another first round, I don't care what pick it is in the first round. You know, when it's such a great year like this, when we got such great staff like we do, I think we're going to get a real gem with that pick. I hope so, too. That'll do it for this news edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 6,000 subs. We really appreciate all the support. So thank you for those of you who watch these videos every day. And for the new viewers, we hope you stick around. I'm Josh Goss from my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.